to be praised, to be praised, hallelujah. Amen. We just thank God for our being here today, and we just give God glory for, for all of you that are here, and we're going to share with you a, uh, an encouraging word. I, I, I hope it's encouraging to you. Uh, coming from the book of 1 Kings, 13th chapter. 1 Kings, the 13th chapter. Begin with verse number 1. Hallelujah. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jer Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, O altar, thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by thy name, and unto thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn, inc burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass that when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And as his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. The altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hands were restored him again, and he, be and, and he and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it charged, it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Amen. A key verse is verse 10. Focus on that. Say, so he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Amen. We're going to use for a subject today, come one way, leave another. Say that with me. Say, come one way. Leave another. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Today, we just simply for a few minutes, we're going to talk about uh, the importance of not going back. Somebody say, I can't go back. I'm not going to go back the way that I came. Because we all have come to this place, wherever you are in life, you come here. We've all come through different paths. Are y'all still with me? Some of us come from the way of the streets. Some of us come from the way. Amen. Uh, 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 from here or there, from drinking, from drugging, from running and doing this, clubbing and all that. We all come from different, different paths in life. But what God wants us to understand that there's nothing in our past that's good. Somebody say what it said. There's nothing in my past that's good. Everything God got for me is in front of me. Say that. Say everything God has for me is in front of me. Amen. So, we're not going to go back the way that what? That we came. Amen? Uh, 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 the old folks said, well, I, I, we've come through dangers, seen and unseen. Come on with me. You with me ain't big. Amen. We come from danger, seen and unseen. So, why you want to go back the way you came when you already done come through stuff that tried to kill you? Come on, somebody. What you want to go back for? You've already made it through. In 
the gospel according to Luke, the ninth chapter, verse 62. Here's Jesus says something very important. The gospel according to Luke 9, verse 62. Let's look at that. The gospel according to Luke, verse 9, and verse 62. Verse 62. I got 16 up, right? Verse 62. Thank you. Hallelujah. And look at what it says. It says, then Jesus said unto him, we saying unto us even, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now, now, now let's, let's dissect this, this for a minute. He, Jesus said, uh, no man having put his hand on the plow. What does that mean? The plow represents work. Somebody say work. No man having beginning a good work, amen, amen, and looking back is fit. Now, now let's break down this word look, because really what this word look is really talking about is turning back. Somebody say, don't turn back. Amen. Because, see, how do we walk? We walk by, no, <laughs> in the physical. Y'all too, y'all too, y'all too spiritual for me right now. How do we walk? You walk by your what? Your sight, right? So whatever you're looking toward, that's what you're walking toward. Are y'all still with me? Amen? You're walking toward, you, 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 your, your feet follow your eyes. Let's put it like that. Our feet follow our eyes. Amen? Our eyes lead our feet. Amen? So when it says, don't look back, it's really saying don't turn back. Because a lot of times, we don't... We think back. How many folks had a problem thinking back? Raise your hand if you have a problem sometimes thinking back. Come on, you, don't, you ain't got to be ashamed. You just think back on, on old stuff. Stuff in the past, how it used to be. What we you? Huh? So this is, what, this is where the, the term backslide comes in. It, it's not so much that we turn back, but we slide back. Are y'all still with me? Now, when we slide back, our face is still toward God, still toward him. But we often sometimes slide back. Anybody ever been a backslider? You still love the Lord. Come on, somebody. You still know that all your blessings come from the Lord, but you found yourself back into a spot. If I was Michael Jackson, I'd do the, the moonwalk. The kind of, I can't do it, though. I've never been able to do it, so I ain't going to even try. But y'all know what it looked like. Come on, somebody. We don't, we don't turn back, but we slide back into some stuff. Come on, somebody. I, I can't count the times I, I thought I was moving forward, but when I looked around, I was back in some mess. In the world, I get back here. I still go in the church. I still love the high. I get back. Somebody say, I done backslid. Somebody say, I done backslid. But I ain't turned back. So I just slid back. Come on, somebody. And the Bible teaches us that the Lord is married to the backslider. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Huh? Just because you mess up a little bit, he ain't going to divorce you. Come on, somebody. God, the Lord is married to us. That's why we always want to know that we can always keep moving forward. I can get back to where I was, but I don't want to go back to where I've been. Somebody say that. We would say, I can get back to where I was, but I don't want to go back to where I've been. I don't want to turn back. Amen. Because I don't know about you. But I didn't like Keith, that Keith back there. That sucker was low down, selfish. And, come on, somebody. Huh? I did stuff back then I don't even want to think about no more. Amen, amen. And the Lord said, I don't have to. But what is it? We're going to get to this eventually. I don't want to get here too fast. But eventually, we're going to get to the fact that we really are our own enemy, our worst enemy. Why? Because of self-condemnation. Yeah. 
We won't forgive ourselves. That's why you keep thinking about that. Because you hadn't forgave, forgiven yourself for what you did back then. Some of y'all to grab that later when you wondering why certain things you just can't seem to stop thinking about it every now and again. It's because you haven't forgiven yourself for what you did. That was another occasion. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to paraphrase. But when Jesus was born, there were three wise men. And we kind of dealt with that. We talked about that a little bit Wednesday night. The three wise men. And the three wise men came by the way of King Herod. And King Herod was trying to find Jesus and kill him. So the three wise men came to Herod, stayed with Herod. And Herod was trying to get them to tell, you know, they, they said they was looking for him. So Herod was looking for him too. So Herod told them, said, look, when you find him, let me know where he is so I can come worship him too. But King Herod had no intention on worshiping him. He wanted to know where he is so he could kill him. So when the three wise men, let me go and read, let me go and read this into your hearing. Let me let the word work. Go with, let's, let's look at that. Let's go, let's look at that. Let's, where is that at? Uh, in the book of Luke. I think that word is. Book of Matthew. Matthew, the second chapter. Go to Matthew 2. Let's go there. Matthew 2, verse 9. Hallelujah. The gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter, verse number 9. Look at what it says. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which, was, which they saw in the east it went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream, that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country, Somebody say another way. They came one way, but they were they went another another way. Somebody say there's another way. I don't have to go back the way I came. There's always another way. Come on, somebody. And this is God's way. The other way is who way? God's way. My way took me through so much nonsense and foolishness, but God's way. Somebody said, that's the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto the Father except by who? By him. Look, we're closing with this, but I want to get to, to be able to minister to some of you. William Murphy, I like William Murphy. William Murphy sang a song that says, I came here broke, but when I leave, come on, somebody, I'll be rich. I came here sick. But when I leave, come on, somebody, I'll be healed. That song is a song of expectation. How many oftentimes do we come to church with no expectation? Just whatever happens, going to happen. We need to come to church with expectation. We're saying, I'm going to go to church this way, but I'm going to leave another way. Come on, somebody. I, I, I'm, I'm going to come. I'm going. I'm messed up, but I'm going to church anyhow. But when I leave, I'm going to be straight. Come on, preacher. Like you said, like, huh? Preacher said, all you got to do is praise him. And you, you might have came broke, but you ain't got to leave broke. <sighs> this thing. That song that they just played, that last song, was one of our one of our bishop's favorite songs. Bishop Hogan, one of his favorite songs, God's Grace. And uh, I was meditating one day, and, and the Lord dropped this in my spirit. He said, the problem that many of us are having is that we're not good at, at managing God's grace. 
we need help in managing his grace because as Paul said, Paul said that he had an issue that he besought the Lord three times to remove it from him. And the Lord didn't. But what the Lord did was, was bless him and tell him that his grace was sufficient. His grace was, amen, enough for him to be able to do what he needed him to do, even with a thorn in his flesh. Amen. Praise the Lord. So right then, Paul got a lesson on managing God's grace. When it comes to managing our money and our funds, sometimes we got to admit, sometimes we haven't did so good in managing our money. Amen? Versus our bill. What, what are you talking about? You're managing your income versus the outcome or your expenses, rather. Amen? So how many times have we mismanaged our grace? What are you talking about, Pastor? Every time you get a bill, there's going to be a due date, and then there's going to be a past due date. Are y'all still with me? Well, the date between the due date and the past due date is called grace. Now, how many times have we went past that past due date? And what happens when you go past the past due date? There is a penalty. I wish I had about five folk that behind on at least one or two pills. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. Huh? Now, how many times have we just taken it upon ourselves to just automatically just look past the due date? Huh? Don't quiet me down when I'm preaching good. Huh? How many times have we just not even looked at the due date and went straight to the past due date? Uh-huh. So as long as I get it by here. Now you already got it sometime. Listen to me. I'm gonna tell you how bad we are at managing grace. You already got it. But if they're gonna give me this long, that's not good management because anything could happen between due date and some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Between due date and past due date, that by the time you get the due date, now you ain't got it. Come on, somebody. Now you got to pay the penalty. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let me break this down on a spiritual level when it comes to us and the, the issues that we have and how we want to manage God's grace in our lives. Look, a lot of times we be down in the dump because we hadn't managed God's grace properly. He said, uh, my grace is enough for you. But because you didn't use that grace in the time that he gave you to use it in for your issue, for every different issue, there's enough grace for that issue. Amen. If you didn't believe God within that time and forgive yourself and let that thing go, now, you got to pay the penalty. And the penalty is you're going to lose some joy. You're going to lose some peace. Because you didn't take God's grace and manage it properly. And apply it to every issue that comes up in your life. There's enough grace in that to cover that. Pay for that. Are y'all still with me? Huh? So we got to learn how to manage God's grace because there's enough grace in everything that you've done wrong, every sin that you committed, every fault that you have. There's enough grace to cover that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now this brings us, bring me to the close and to the, to the altar call today. Because the Lord has shown me that there's there's way too many of us that haven't forgiven ourselves for some things. 
there are some things that we just simply haven't, God has forgiven us. He's, he's forgotten about it. But we're still holding on to it. And you know, and you know what that does? That keeps us from working the works of the Lord and doing what God wants us to do. Because what it does, it makes us feel like we are unworthy. Come on, some, come on, somebody. Because of the things that we have done, we feel like we are unworthy to do what God wants us to do. So we stay stagnant and we do nothing. So we just come to church and sit down and hear a word, but we won't do anything for the Lord. We won't do nothing outside of coming to church because we don't feel like we're worthy. Today, some of us, need, we need to forgive ourselves. Some of us for some stuff that happened when you was teenagers. Some stuff that you did way back when. One of the, one of the, I was listening to a show about women, and I don't know why I kept listen, watching this, but I learned something. There was a show up talking about women, and women, women's issues are men's issues, too. That's why the Lord had me to keep watching it, because women's issues are men's issues, too. And what they were talking about is the damage that having a child out of wedlock does to a woman's spirit. And the reason it damages the woman's spirit is because of the world's look, how the world looks on young women when they have a child young. Not, not, not forgetting, not even remembering or thinking back how young Mary was when God impregnated her. She was very, very young when God chose her to, to have Jesus, amen? And here's one thing that I got out of uh, that, that whole thing that they were talking about for about an hour. is that you can't let what other people think of you determine who you are. <laughs> You're not the first person to ever fall into that situation. You won't be the last. And just because you're not with your baby daddy, or your baby daddy was no good, don't mean that that child didn't need to come into the world. <sighs> and people try to make you feel bad about what you did and hold it over your head all the days of your life, like the story. Come on, somebody. Huh? Sometimes, young ladies, listen to me. Sometimes God, <laughs> look, the reason that the man is not in the child's life is because God trusted you to be the mother, but he didn't trust you, him to be the father. He used his seed to get the child into the, into the earth for a purpose, but he didn't trust him to be in his life. Simple as that. Let it go. Keep moving forward. Now, you're going to have to forgive yourself, sisters. You got to let that thing go. God is not holding that against you. You're going to have to let that go. Your child was not a mistake. Lord, let them be delivered today. Huh? Life is such a precious thing to God. All life is a gift. If you knew how many babies don't make it, you would know that all those that does is a gift from God. If you knew how many babies were sent back, you would know that everyone that comes in is a gift from God. So let's not, let's stop looking down and belittling people, especially our, our sisters. And that many of them were hoodwinked and bamboozled. Okay, by brothers, with smooth-talking brothers like some of us used to be. Are y'all still with me? Huh? 
and, and parents, I need you to forgive yourselves too. Because some of you have been thinking that what did I do for my child to, to get caught up in this, caught up in that? <laughs> You've got to realize that you don't control everybody's life, even your children's life. You can't control what your children do. My mother and father never did drugs in their life, but I became a drug addict. They had nothing to do with that. That was my choice. I went the wrong way. Come on, they gave me a good example of not to do drugs, but I chose to do it. That's not on them. There was a man born blind, and the people came to Jesus, and they said, Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus said, neither. Huh? Neither did this man sin, nor his parents, but this man was born blind, so that one day, I'm just going to paraphrase, he was born blind, so that this day, when I came through, I could give him his sight. That's all he was trying to get the folk to see, preacher. He was born blind, so when I came through the day, I could give him his sight. And if I didn't give him his sight, you wouldn't believe who I was. So that's why he was born blind. So why was I a drug addict? So that one day God could deliver me. Come on, somebody. Why did you get, get fall into that? So that one day the Lord could deliver you. And you be a testimony to who he is and what he can do. I once was. I once was blind. Come on, somebody. Amen. We all been some. Come on, somebody. But the beauty is in being was something. But now I'm found. Amen, ain't bad. Huh? Now I was ministering to some of y'all that some of y'all that has that, that that need to forgive yourself. I want you to come to the altar. You know who you are. Some things you've done in your past. Come on, I want you to forgive yourself today. Come on to the altar. I want you to let that go. Don't carry that another further. Another further. We ain't gonna carry this another further. This is it. We laying it down. It happened. I did it. It's over with. Okay. God has forgiven me, and I'm finna forgive myself today. I'm finna forgive myself today. I'm setting myself free. I, I ain't gonna, I ain't, come on somebody. I'm gonna set myself free from what I did. I ain't gonna no longer let, be worried about what folk, what they saying or what they think about what I did. Because it's public. Are y'all with me? It's in the public. And then when something is in the public, everybody can see it and everybody got their own opinion. Everybody is entitled to their opinion. So let them have their opinion. But remember, God is the one that has the last say. <laughs> and if God is not going to hold it against you, why should you? Romans 8 and 10 says, there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. He's saying, but all that's saying is forgive yourself. Son, daughter, all he's saying is forgive yourself. And, and he said, I know you've been saying, why did this have to befall me? Why did I have to go through this? And so that the the, the works of God could be manifest in your life. So that the works of God could be manifested in your life. Over and over again in the Bible, I saw what God allowed a situation to create. He, he allowed a situation to arise. He allowed it. Just so he could come back and fix it. Amen. And so that people would know that he is the one that fixed it. Amen. So if God allowed it, then it has purpose in your life. 
Say this with me. Say, my pain has purpose. My problems have solutions. All I have to do is trust in God. Hallelujah. Huh? Every pain has purpose. And every problem has a solution. You heard the old folks saying it for years, coming up in churches, look here, ain't nothing too hard for God. Huh? Ain't nothing that God can't do. Nothing that he can't give you the power to overcome. Hallelujah. Now say this with me. Say, I forgive myself. Lift your hands up to the Lord. Repeat after me. Say, I forgive myself. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for not managing your grace properly. You've given me enough grace to cover all my sins, all of my faults, and all of my errors. Father, I thank you for this grace. And from this day forward, I will not be mindful of what others say about me. I will not even care what others think about me. I only want you to be pleased with me. So create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us of all of our sins. And I even, I press this out even amongst those that are still in the pews, God, but, but their feet couldn't move. But since they're in this place, God, we, you have dominion. Your Holy Spirit has dominion in this place. So weave throughout the pews, God, and begin to pant and saturate their hearts, God, to know that you love them regardless of what they've done or even what they're going to do in the future. For you loved us in spite of us, and you died for us while we were yet sinners. So, God, we thank you, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There may be someone here never received Jesus. We want to give you an opportunity to come. Because Jesus is also a perfect example of one that came one way and went another. What do you mean, Pastor? I said, Jesus was born. He was, the scripture is clear. Jesus was born of a virgin. He came into this earth just like you and I did, but he, did, he left a different way. He went to the cross, and he bore our sins, and he died, and he rose on the third day. But the scriptures declare that the last thing that he did was he encouraged his disciples and gave them a commandment, and the scripture said that he was taken up in the cloud. Come on, somebody. So the Lord came one way, and he went another. And that's what he wants us to do each and every time we come together, each and every time we commune with him, even at home. When you pray, when you study, he wants you to leave his presence another way. Amen, somebody. Maybe you're here and you don't have a church home. We want to give you an opportunity to come and unite with us. Amen, as well. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our church is growing. You know why it's growing? Because we speak that it's growing. Amen. And growth is not about numbers. Growth is about, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost and the Spirit. Because it's as the Spirit grows that we will begin to see things happen in the natural. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.